all this, meeting, all this meeting to order. Ask up if you guys don't mind. Fine. All the directors are here that need to be present, so I guess we don't have any 2449 assembly bill things. Public comment in the public waiting. Nope, we don't have Rick on. Okay, move on to item four discussion classification, compensation, and organizational study. So Allison's been the lead on this, so she's going to. The talker, dirty deed. <laughs> um, so we just want to meet, and we'll probably do this a few more times as we go through the various sort of phases or benchmarks of the study and just let you know sort of where we're at. Um, you know, how staff are responding, anything that's surprising or not surprising, or um, it was definitely a recommendation of our consultant to engage the board through the process, just um, you know, as their practice has sort of dictated that sometimes the end result it can be a little bit surprising or disappointing and it sort of, you know, sets a, a different tone at the end. Um, so we definitely wanted to engage you um, as the process goes along. Um, so thorough questionnaire. Yeah, I'll get to I'll get to that. Um, so after the board um, approved us to begin engaging with the consultant, um, we had an informal kickoff meeting um, where they gave us sort of our our honey do list of things that they needed for us. Um, to sort of learn who we are, what we do, what our employees do, sort of what our overall structure looks like. Like basically, what organization are we dealing with? Um, we sort of briefly discussed again what our goals were for the study, um, sort of the approach to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, some of the stuff they asked for was um, obviously our organizational chart, our current job descriptions. Um, they asked for extensive sort of explanation of um, who works in what department, who they report to, um, what their classification is now, so they could sort of really get a, an overall picture. Um, they took a couple weeks to review that stuff um, before we did our official kickoff. Um, in the interim of, uh, of them reviewing that, um, Jeff and I were tasked with coming up with the eight comparable agencies, um, which you'll see on the last page of the packet. Um, and sort of our approach in deciding what the comparable agencies would be um, were obviously size. We wanted to pick something that was potentially, at least some of them were very similar in size to us. Um, they were similar in organizational structure, so we really looked at what positions they have. Do they have a lot of the same positions as us? Because the goal is obviously to get the most amount of comparables possible across all eight comparables. So you don't want to end up with one position that only had a couple of comparables because the agencies you chose didn't have that particular position, um, which has happened in previous studies. So we had looked at prior studies and saw sort of what we picked and what were what were the results of that and sort of where did it come up short and tried to not pick those same agencies again. Um, also, just to not pick them so that we could obviously get different comparables overall. Um, also, um, when a, a demographic and we want to choose things that were local, but also choose things um, that maybe weren't local, but very similar in demographic, very similar in um, you know, another sort of touristy sort of town. I mean, not some, you know, urban dense Bay Area um, agency. Um, and one of the things that we really th thought about this time is uh, competitive appropriateness. Where are we potentially going to gain employees from and where are we going to potentially lose employees to? Um, and making sure that we factor those in because those are really important when evaluating sort of your employment marketplace as a whole. Um, and so that's how we came up with the eight in the back of the packet. Um, so we're hopeful that those will sort of yield really fantastic results um, when we go to compare. Um, our official study kickoff was April 13th, um, and that was Jeff and I's opportunity to meet the six-person CPS HR consulting team that's going to be assigned to us throughout the duration of the study. Um, each one of those staff members with CPS has a subject matter expertise that will come in handy at different points in the study. Um, they are also located all over the U.S., um, so certain uh, staff that have subject matter expertise that is best fit being in California, those people are obviously hired specifically so they know the marketplace. Other staff, um, it actually is beneficial for them to have more global knowledge. Um, and so we have somebody who's in Ohio, we have someone who's in Sacramento, one of our representatives is in Texas, um, and 
none of that affects their ability to be successful in the particular role they hold with CPS. Um, and they were very, very nice and asked us if that bothered us at all. They explained the logic of why they have a sort of a, a diverse um, staffing. It sounded good to us. They're all very, very capable. Um, we're actually especially lucky um, in this study because one of our um, team members is actually the director of um, the class and comp studies, and she's actually going to be working on our project for the duration because she's going to use it as a training opportunity for one of the um, newer, less seasoned um, managers that's there. Um, so we feel really lucky about that because we sort of have this like higher level sort of oversight that came as a bonus, and she is absolutely fantastic. Um, and we're really lucky, and so we're looking forward to working with her. Um, our employee orientation took place on May 1st, so we had both locations were remote. Um, every staff member attended. Um, they met the CPS HR team. That is where they sort of explained the goals of the study, what the process was going to look like, um, really engaged with our staff and sort of, um, you know, created buy-in on how crucial it is that they participate um, when asked, um, essentially, um, one of the more valuable things that I think they did was they did a slide, which you'll see in your packet, that sort of dispelled any sort of myths or worries about what the study would entail. Like, nobody's looking to get demoted. We're not going to judge you for your performance. That's not even part of the evaluation. It's really um, sort of put into perspective why we're doing this, and, and I think they left there feeling really good about it. Um, they also went over the PDQ, um, which, yes, it is extensive. Um, they did hand out um, and provide a sort of a, a sample PDQ, helpful tips, um, made themselves completely available for anyone who had questions. Um, the goal was for each employee to do it individually, um, and preference was that they, they weren't coached in any way or assisted by somebody who directly supervises them or is involved in the organization, and so CPS made themselves very available to answer any questions directly. Um, I think that there was a little bit of apprehension um, when they very first opened the PDQ the next day, and they're like, wow, this is extensive. I think that I would say 50% of them left that PDQ for a day, sort of got an idea of what it said, came back the next day and went straight at it with like excitement. And we've seen, I think we have two PDQs that have yet to be completed and the deadline is tomorrow, they're almost done. Um, several of them have already been reviewed and they are, absolutely spectacular. People really took the time to really articulate what they did, um, you know, express any sort of concerns that they have, really seem to be super in tune with what they do and what skill set they need to be able to do that successfully. Um, and so I think it's going to yield really great results. Um, we will have 100%, uh, you know, participation rate in our PDQ, which apparently is not normal. Um, you usually have staff who are like, yeah, that just looks like a lot, like, I don't know, or they fill it out and it's just not really helpful. Um, that is not the feedback I'm getting. So they're pretty excited that we have some staff that are really engaged in the process. Um, so that's exciting. Um, we're currently in about week five of 21 weeks of this phase of the study. And um, this will be the longest phase because it has the most research and sort of comparative um, and honing in on exactly what these um, new job descriptions are going to look like, taking into account the feedback of, you know, what somebody does, what skill set they need, does that match what it currently says they do, um, that sort of thing, because these new job descriptions that they create, um, they, that is what they'll use for agency comparables. So they don't use the current ones, they use the appropriate ones that they create that really demonstrates sort of what somebody does and what skill set they have to be successful, and then goes out into our eight comparables and, um, you know, does the actual compensation portion. So that will come later. Um, this particular stage should be completed by the first week of September. Um, I have a feeling we may run ahead of schedule because we were very, very responsive. Um, and I think in about two weeks, they were planning on starting some of the employee interviews from the PDQ. And we've asked to have all of our employees interviewed just so that everybody's perspective is equally heard. Um, and in the event that somebody struggled to articulate on paper what it is that they do, that they'll have the opportunity to verbalize that. Um, and I think that was supposed to start in a couple of weeks. I have a feeling that a lot of our staff will be interviewed next week um, because 
we, they were very responsive with their PDQs. Mm -hmm. And so we're running ahead of schedule. Um, so my hope is, is that, um, and our request was, if we are responsive, will you be equally as responsive on the timeline? And that was an agreement that they made with us. So fingers crossed. Um, so that's sort of where we're at. Um, said this next portion will take yes. <laughs> the next portion, like I said, will take the majority of the summer. Um, I'm sure we'll get feedback and Jeff and I will meet with them and sort of hear where they're at and we'll reconvene and sort of give you an update on what that's looking like as we approach the end of this study towards the end of the summer, early fall. That's all I have. So, uh, so I would add um, a couple of things. Every employee gets does a PDQ. Every employee gets an interview. One of the things that's interesting is since we did this interim staffing and rolled this out, there has been a marked change staff here. It's, it's positive. It's energizing. It's um, stepping up, leaning into collaborative work. Um, there is this subtle um, switch that has been flipped, and you can feel it. Well, we used to say in the army, they're all leaning forward in the foxhole. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. It is. It is very distinct and evident um, uh, how things are working and how people are communicating and collaborating. We've had a couple of situations, technical issues. And the, the team has just gotten together and fixed it. And very professionally and very, um, very distinctly. I, I, it, it's hard to put like your finger on it, but you walk around and you hear conversations and you see, see things getting done. And, and it's across the board. You force it. No. We just said, hey, we want to do this. This is why we're doing this. And we want to we want to move forward in a succession plan and a twenty year plan, and here's how we're going to get there in a couple of steps. And it's just taken off. It's only been months, two months. Um, there is a marked change in leaning forward, moving forward. I, I've read a couple of these PDQs. We got great comments from every corner. Of the organization, not to sort of point fingers and you know you make assumptions, but red Dwight's it's it's a lot more thorough than you'd probably get if you talk, and and that's across the board. So, um, I, I think we're getting good information. I think we're we're getting thoughtful information. Um, and I think that's where the success of this effort and the succession planning and the overall concept of, you know, where are we going to be in 20 years is. There's a lot of information flowing. <clears throat> so I'm very excited about it. It's, it's great to see staff in their roles. It's great to see some of these things starting to take place. Yes, yeah, years, years ago, there was a cartoonist in World War II named. Stevens, he did aviation. On H, you know, like a, a lot of things he did one time. I remember it was, you know, there's the airplane. Here's how it's viewed by the pilot. Panic, warm in sky, the air traffic control, you know, all these views of something. And it struck me when you were saying about the apprehension of people filling these things out. I noted when I was reading the slides was that you know, they would submit those to the but then the supervisors would read those. I think the way it read is a supervisor could add to that or kind of had. But the reason I brought those two things up is that in the past work for these kind of self analysis kind of things of what your job is and all that. People have been reluctant to put any kind of comments in there because they get blowback from the supervisors. They're not seeing that, right? You think people are being open with their 
criticisms of we think we could do this better or that better. In other words, are you as supervisors seeing the job differently than they are? Is that being masked by that apprehension or do you think you're really seeing a picture? I mean, I don't think the PDQ necessarily solicits that sort of information. Um, I think it allows somebody to emphasize the things that they feel like they're most empowered with. Um, they also have the ability to articulate things that they feel like um, skill sets that maybe aren't being recognized appropriately in their job description that we're leveraging. Um, I, but I don't think that it solicits those sorts of comments. Um, I think um, it does ask, I think, if there's um, some sort of, it, it prefaces all of the questions in, this is what you cur your current job description is, and everyone was provided what they currently are, and are, they're familiar with them anyway. Um, and does this accurately describe what you do? You know, does it accurately describe the skill set needed to be successful in this? But then it also asks, if someone were to come into your position, is there anything additional or different that would be needed or not needed? And that's where some people kind of, I wouldn't say that it went negative by, it was constructive. It solicits constructive information where people basically said, well, I've acquired this over time and you know, now it's being leveraged for X, Y, and Z. And if someone were to expect you know, someone coming in to do this particular task, if they didn't have this coming in, at least to this level, they would not be successful if asked to do this, that sort of thing. Um, and then they'll use that information to be like, okay, and you get to articulate if it's critical to your job, well, then it's clearly missing in the current description. And so that's what they use. And so I think that the way it's structured, um, and I'm not gonna lie, I pre-reviewed the PDQ prior to us deciding to send it out. Um, and this company promised me that they have spent years and years and years crafting this PDQ to solicit the information the correct way to get really valuable feedback. Um, because I was like, God, you know, it just seems like pretty advanced for multiple levels of folks who maybe don't do a lot of paperwork. And like Jeff said, it was so surprising. Some of them that you would get from people who were like, you would think they're gonna struggle through this. They were articulate, they thought about it, they were able to express it very comprehensively. It's very valuable information. Um, cause I did expect them to be relatively brief and then for them to utilize the interview to sort of feed the information in, in an easier way for them. And that is not what we're seeing. I think it's, it's going to, I think it's ended up being a much more advanced jumping off place for the interview. So I think we'll get more valuable information than maybe they even thought we'd get because our participation rate is quite high also for a study. We, we guess that's what I was asking, and, and I think your answer is, is, you know, sometimes supervisors think you're doing this, and the reality is they're doing that. Well, and some of this, or all of it, and some more, but and, and so the supervisors actually learn something. That, that's kind of what I was wondering if agree you with, were saying. Agree with you. Anyway. And we spent a lot of time, both of us, talking to people, and some of it was in groups, and some of them came and talked. And we said, look, we're, we're trying to make sure that what you do and the piece of paper that describes what you do match. And if there's something missing from one or the other, we need to make sure it's included. Because we need to, and part of it's legal for us. If, if we're gonna ask somebody to do something, we have to make sure that, that we've given the opportunity to be trained in that skill. So there, there's a legal conversation that Allison and I do on some of these things. But I, I haven't seen, um, sort of in the comments that I've seen, uh, concerns about something getting skewed, not being included, uh, and then I couple that with the with the attitude that seems to have have started to flow, and um, I, I, I'm very impressed with things we're getting from from every aspect in every corner of this organization. And the nice thing is, is that the supervisor review portion, you were not allowed to change anything to anything that they said. We cannot edit any of their responses at all. We actually get only four boxes where we basically can reference something that we either said, actually they do this 25% of the time, I would say, instead of the 15 that they said. 
or we can say they missed adding this particular skill that they possess, or that's only an annual thing. And, you know, and it becomes dependent on what staff we have here. And so essentially we, in lieu of, and I, in making it, for example, a comment would be in lieu of adding it to a job description, it would be my preference to, um, you know, assign it to a different classification with that's more appropriate with specific training, you know, or some, you know, just something that's like a little one off thing. If you see it, it's, it's literally like three feedback boxes at the bottom and you really are only allowed to make specific references. But I mean, it symbolizes the value of what was provided by the employee and does not give you an enormous amount of of leeway to really start dicing through what they said. Um, and they're just, we haven't seen the necessity to do that anyway. So I think the PDQ has served its purpose that way. Supervisors are filling out their own version anyway. Correct. Um, but, you know, we, we've also had some conversations um, on, on off line, just Allison and I with the, their team. And one of the real important things is, is, I think we found that some of the people in our organization and some of the job descriptions are very um, um, person specific. And in going through this process of what do you do, how much do you do, and then the interviews of how they're going to they're say how complicated is that, you know, what, what does it entail in those things? We're, we're going to find that some of our positions like Oh, uh, like I'll use Lori. She's a customer service rep. Well, what's what's one or two steps below Lori level of expertise and knowledge in some of these extra tasks? Would they be would they be assumed to be um, an essential minimum qualification for a customer service rep three or two or a one or how does that all work? And so we've had these conversations with CPS and say take. Take Lori, take her responses, take her job duties, take her you know, classification, dice it into the pieces. And then when you compare it to these other organizations, what's the level of expertise of, of our position versus that other one? And how would you include that in, a, in an individual ladder? Um, because it'll, it'll then give us a tool as an organization and, and managers to be able to, if Lori retires or something happens, um, where would we fill that position? How would we fill that position as an organization? Today it would be somewhat of a individualized sort of select objective. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Trying not to account for this institutional knowledge we're so lucky to have, but creating it that's more of an employment sort of industry standard for somebody that would be coming into that position, realizing that there's always a reinvestment that has to happen anytime that you replace somebody, especially a long-term employee sort of taking those anomalies out and getting to a core description for that particular position. So overall, we've made very good progress. We see very good responses from staff. Um, everybody's getting doing this and, and doing it in detail. Um, you know, I, I've heard a couple of, what did they say? Would they thought it would take 30 minutes or <laughs> an hour? An hour. Yeah. And to, to, for the employees to do it. And we're hearing of staff doing much more than that, and the responses would indicate that they're putting in more time. They're not just putting it up on our screen and staring at it. Um, they're allowed to open it, do some work, save it, come back, you know, and so it's not like sit down, do it all, get it all done first time thing. And so several people are on their fourth and fifth time back to go back through. So they've taken it to heart. They've, they've, they, they're putting in the effort and the energy. Um, when we see it, and not just this, but um, really, see, did you have some questions? I did. Just a couple. Uh, first of all, on on your list of eight, it's all special districts except City of Thousand Oak. Um. Yeah. Possibly. It, that's where the size factor comes in a little bit too, and then just organizational structure as far as what industry wise, what positions do they have? Because, like I said, when you're taking, say, our 
12 classifications, different classifications we have, it would be a shame to pick something that only has four of those because then you don't get matches for eight. And so you really dice through and you do find some common denominators of, you know, similar organizational structures, you know, with positions that would- Was Thousand Oaks organized like Ventura where water and sewer is part of the city government? Yeah, and they're just bigger. So they have- so what what one of the um, things when you consider somebody bigger is they have those those levels in some classifications that we're sort of looking at, um, and so that's going to be helpful also as far as when we create say like in theory a customer service rep one two three four, well organizations of that size have those ladders um, and we'll want to just for comparative purposes also because if you pick someone too small you end up sort of like using us as a comparable. It's really helpful in some ways, but not helpful in others because we only have one customer service rep. So you're not gonna get to visualize a whole ladder Water, of, yeah. of, of, of sort of acquiring of skills for advancement. Um, the answers that are in here sounded to me like something written by either an HR professional or perhaps even a lawyer. That I, that I don't know. I don't know how many of our These are their samples. Yes, I don't know how many of our staff actually found this to be incredibly helpful, other than maybe to indicate that they needed to complete everything and that you could have multiple selections for for things. Um, but I wouldn't say that the responses were probably uber helpful based on what I've seen people fill out. I'm impressed. Yeah, I I know this this was a tough bill for the board to swallow with the financing part of this and the price, but I'm already seeing I think more value out of this than we've gotten in any other study that, that I've been involved with here. I think in the past it's we're gonna do the study, this is gonna cost when it's done, here it is. Like I've stated before, I think. Too many times that goes in file drawer and doesn't have any value after that. I, I think this is going to be, if it continues on this path, I think it's going to be a good study. Thank you for the report, Allison. It's always. Not surprising that the staff has taken this seriously. Good job with it. But gratifying to hear it. You know, um, you know, we work very hard to um, sort of create an atmosphere of, of excellence, of, of growth, of opportunity, of, of um, responsibility and accountability, and. And it's a million decisions every other every day, and you do that for years, and you come across something like this, and you say, "Okay, now it's time to 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 artic you to articulate back to us what you do and why you do it and how you do it and what's important." And something that maybe we don't recognize as a huge deal is actually a huge deal, and something that we think is a huge deal isn't a huge deal, and and that's coming back. And and in in specifics in a positive, constructive way. And, I, you know, it, it, it's, it's really enriching. It just really is. And, and then when you sort of go out and sort of touch and, and understand some of the the day-to-day -day problems that come up and how they're getting solved and the people that are interacting with who and how it's, how it's, you know, flowing, um, this team mindset, there's this help each other out mindset. Um, the, the collection crew and the treatment plant crew have collaborated more in the past two to three months than, you know, the past you four, see it in the reports. four or five years, you know. This crew is helping with that stuff, this crew with that other stuff. And, 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 and it's the decisions that are being made down at that level to, what they need to do and how they need to do it and the tools and the and the organization it they're deciding and 
and and it's and it's flowing very efficiently. You know, it doesn't have to go through Allison or me. You know, can I buy a tool or can I do this or can I help him out or help them out? And 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 it's really it, it's enriching to see. We've got good people and they're proving it by giving us feedback by the day to day performance. Yeah, right. Um, and and things break and we have problems. I mean, it's an industrial facility that runs twenty four seven. Stuff just breaks. Jump right in and they solve it. And hey, you go get the crane truck and you go pick up the part and we'll set up and we'll get you know. We got a couple instances. I think on a Saturday, last Saturday, the motor on the the uh, auger for the belt press broke and it was. It was done on it was complete on a Saturday. So one guy got in the truck and went to pick up the motor at the at the motor shop down in Oxnard. The other guys on the crew came and prepped the 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 opening. So as soon as the the heart showed up, they dropped it right in and you know on a Saturday and back up and running. And and you know, the call I got was, hey, the motor's done, we're gonna go take care of it. And then you know, a text a couple hours later, it's all taken care of and why they did what they did or how they did it, they, they're just doing it. Then we're seeing that sort of same sort of level of effort and mindset coming back to us through these, these responses. This is valuable is things that are in my job description. You told me a skill I needed for this job. And I don't use it. So, right. Extra paperwork. Right. Or I have this, I have this skill and I could help the district, but it's not being recognized or not being pulled in to help. And, and you know, so it, it's uh, it, it's a very uh, gauging positive process so far. Very good. I'm glad to hear that we're getting positive, constructive. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. everybody's involved. It's not. One from collections and one from treatment plans. I think it's very valuable. It's not supervisors answering for everybody. No. And, and and you know the interviews are that person with CPS, not with Allison in the room or the supervisor in the room or anything. They 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 get to say in their words and and answer questions and you know um, be great. Well, why do you suppose that is? I mean, all, all of it's changed as we've asked them to fill out these forms. Why all of a sudden are they all, there's some, there's some other thing behind all that? Or well, what? we have, I mean, I've filled out a lot of forms and I've ever got too wound up. With <laughs> <laughs> I'm not arguing, you know, I, I'm sure you're seeing, but I just don't understand why it would be. We have spent, and the board, we have collectively as a, as a, you know, the senior managers and the board, we have collectively told people that we value our people. We want you to be engaged. We want you to have a career here. We want you to, to be involved and, and, and infuse um, your information in. And we've also had some conversations, and we're very honest about it, about sort of the, the, the transition of generations here at the district and, and succession planning. And, and, and I think that we're... Doing this, doing the interim appointments that we did, and that's, doing that's key. Doing some little things. Uh, jobs change and compensation changed. You know, it's temporary. It's obvious that something's going on. Yeah, not, we, we, we going we've, on. We've sort of, as a senior managers, through this, through that, through other, proven it to people that we want. We actually mean what we say. And and then we were hands off. And and I, I was down at the plant the other day, and and you know we learned a lot in the storms about being able to move water around and how to do things. And I and I and and I got kind of cornered by two of the operators. And they said, "Well, we need to do um, uh, we need to do some work to we made this work, but it was kind of jury rigged. So we'd like to do some some stuff." 
and they and they started talking, but they were sort of asking. And and I said, I said, you guys know what you're supposed to do. You know what works best. I said, get with Rick and Liz to get the technical details. I said, you decide what you need. I said, and then come to me with a with a whole package. Pump a valve, a fitting, fix this, fix this, wire this together. I said, I want to see a whole package. And then we'll go to the board and say, here's what we want to do and why we want to do it. And here's all the pieces. And and I said, but you decide, you're the operator. But I, I don't I don't want to choose the valve and the part and the this is in the bolt and the stuff. It's clean and scary at the same time. And so it's 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 providing people the responsibility to do their job and the accountability to do their job and then giving them the authority to sort of come up with the solution. And you wrap all that together along with good people and it starts to snowball. It's through some of the actions that we've taken in these all these little conversations and this effort, uh, interim appointments and, and conversations when, you know, they come to us, we say, Go ahead, come up with a solution. And I think that this symbolizes a mutual investment. I mean, because we know that they're invested in their positions. I mean, obviously, they're very successful. They're high performing. They do a great job. We, I mean, we see it every day. But I think this says, like, hey, we see that you're invested in what you do for us. Like, we, we want to invest in you and make sure that we know sort of what that entails exactly. Um, and, I mean, I think that we recognize that there are certain positions that are of specific you know, interest to us in this because we know they're a little wonky and they're very vague because we didn't really know what it was going to look like because they're newer or ones that are older that are vague because there's a diverse group. You know, you have a sort of a, someone who's been here for 30 something years and someone who's been here for three years and that's technically looks the same, but how do you actually sort of put that together so that it is really the same? I mean, Unfortunately, like institutional knowledge doesn't necessarily go into a job description, but we value it. We want to hear about it because we want to consider it. Um, I think that it just we created a sort of a open, formal, safe space for them to articulate exactly like this is how invested I am. This is what I the skills that I've acquired. This is what I provide to you. This is I mean, I think that it's it's become just very motivating for them, you know, in a different way um, to be able to have sort of that solicited, you know, um, and considered because I think, you know, it's like, hey, I see how invested you are. And so tell me about it, that sort of thing. And I think that that's the climate that it sort of has naturally created, which I think is super awesome. Um, and to be honest, I, I don't think either one of us expected it to be sort of like this. I mean, people left the, you know, the three 40 minute orientation going, hey, I like those people. Like, they explain that really well. Like, I feel good about this. Like, you know, and it's like, and then they open the PDQ and they're, mm, you know, you know, but it's like, I think they left there really feeling like the CPS team was also invested in it and not just going through the motions. And I think, it, like I said, it's just sort of net created this climate that has momentum that, I mean, I hope we see it through the whole duration of the study, but I, I, I'm hopeful and I, I mean, I, I feel like it could be awesome. So that's where we are. Um, you know, we hit kind of this PDQ milestone. The interviews will be next. Um, probably be some, some thoughtful conversations and crunching at CPS and Allison and I, and some of those comments. We, we've provided, um, from some of these other organizations, some of the ladders that exist in some of these other organizations, but the specific direction we've given to CPS is. Come up with a ladder that's somewhat industry standard, so we can have comparables across the chart, but also are, are put, put us somewhere in that ladder, so that that we can see where we are with the current person, and they can see where they are job description, and and then we can put together an organizational chart. So I think the next month or so is going to be interviews and and then some thoughtful conversations. Um, and then, then we'll probably get back with you again and, and see where that fallout uh, is out. Create those ladders so that even your senior people can see a way to progress. Absolutely. Um, 
yes. I mean, people need to feel confident in where they are and the, and, and fit in the organization and, and respected in the organization and, and 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 we as an organization value and respect them for what they bring. And I mean, it, yeah, you know, um, there, there's. Uh, I, I told a couple of. Uh, I'll put a couple of pictures in. I don't know if they're going to be in the ops report, but that that baby shower that staff put on for no. Liz, that was something else. Um, Everyone needs some credit for that one. <laughs> I'm telling you, every day. I've been in a lot of organizations where they throw the birthday party and the retirement party and the, the this was this was on a different level. Uh, Big family. Yeah, it was like yeah. a family. Liz that was just here. Yeah. yeah. She's due uh she's due mid June. Um yeah. coming up quick. But Brandon down at the plant, he and his uh old friend Olivia got engaged here uh a couple weeks yeah. ago. You know that. Yeah. And um, so, you know, the, the family's growing and functioning and, and um, you know, it's just uh, all the all the milestones and pieces are there and everybody's happy to participate in stuff like this. So maybe another month we'll have another meeting ish. We'll keep you in the loop, but I'm thinking that's probably the plus or minus um, for the interviews and some conversations. And this is certainly encouraging. Yeah. Bill said numbers were big. It was looking like it's something commensurate. I I really think this is going to be a, a phenomenal tool to explain to our employees. Um, how how they fit in in an organization here and the broader organization as a whole, and I think it's going to lead to some conversations in 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 some performance reviews, not in a negative way, but but in a positive way to say, you know, you know, here's the ladder. If, if you want to get somewhere, you you have to put in too. You know, these ladders are not time based. You know. Five year, ten year, fifteen year kind of time. There's tremendous value having a twenty year employee because of the institutional knowledge, but really valuable to have a twenty year employee who who is continually reinvesting in their own career on their own on their own side as well in terms of knowledge and certifications and and taking on more responsibilities. And and this interim little appointment thing has opened the door to some people saying, "Okay, I can do that." I'm, you know, going to put myself out there and. and the ladders will tell them, well, right. here's another skill I can acquire and better myself. Right. And, 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 and we're going to be very honest with people and say, just because you spent 20 years here, you don't get, you know, promoted because you're the longest guy standing around. That's <laughs> been in organizations where that happened and that's not a <laughs> very good. Uh, Me and the Navy are both like that. And that's not a very there there are a couple of lieutenant commanders I wouldn't follow out the door and a couple of ensigns I'd follow up a hill, you know, and and so that's where we are. Perfect. We'll move on to item five, I guess. Anything that we just talked about what we talked about. Do you have any else? Yeah. Um, so, uh, it, it's, I'm going to send out news and notes tomorrow. It's busy. Um, it, it's, uh, we're, um, well into our summer construction crunch when our flows are low, um, stuff that got backlogged because of, of storms and winter and all kinds of things. They're all breaking loose. Um, start a manhole rehab on Monday. We had a couple of cranes at the plant today doing different projects. Um, people are running pretty, pretty crazy trying to get everything done before the end of the summer construction period. Um, the, um, we are going to come to the board with a discussion about some of these, uh, 
septic to sewer conversions that meet certain state census uh, income criteria. Um, states basically said, if you're uh, a poor neighborhood, we'll pay for your septic to sewer conversion on the state. Um, so we're having a discussion about that. Um, doesn't help the Arbolata, but it helps Casita Springs and some other areas of our community. Um, we did have a situation at OVS school where OVS was pumping groundwater out into the street and the water was polluted uh, because of groundwater in the Arbolata. City said, hey, that's an illicit discharge under stormwater permits. You've got to stop. So they stopped and found out they were pumping it into the sewer. So we've Oops. Uh, it goes somewhere. <laughs> that was the right place for it. It was the right place for it. Maybe the wrong process, but the right place for it. So the good news is, is we're finding some of these things and cooperating, and we've already made contact with the school, and they're very open to um, permitting it as a special uh, discharge, special permit, different than their normal flow. But there are things, you know, these kinds of things are working out in the community. We try and at least be be a player in solving problems rather than creating them. But uh, yeah, if you're uh, if you're interested or or Bill, if you want to head down center stage for a tour or hanging out for a little bit and seeing what's going on, yeah, I'll have some time next week. I want to try and get down to yeah. So things are busy. Staff's really um, working hard to keep things going and. Flows have dropped way back down towards normal. We're still seeing a little bit higher flow on Creek Road from the city, probably just infiltration. Um, but, uh, it's moderated to the point where we actually have a clarifier offline today, empty. Uh, we're doing all the, the motor, the gearbox, all the skids, all the wipers. wipers. We awarded that months ago, but it, you know, get the parts ready. So one of them's empty today, the other one's empty next week for the same service. First time the gearboxes have been replaced since 96. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of stuff happening. Seven years underwater. Yeah. Spinning around 24 7, 365. Dirty water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, salt water, but yeah. not by much. Not by much. <laughs> by much. You know, we use we use our utility water from the plant. We put it back in the water truck, and we use the water truck to, to feed our our cleaner truck, the gap vax, um, because for flushing. for flushing. Because the water districts pay its use of domestic water, but they also don't want us pulling on the fire hydrants because we pull too fast, pumping and filling our water truck, and it mobilizes contaminants in the water line, and people start complaining about odors and color issues in their house. So. We've always used our utility water, um, but it's caustic. And so um, we just had the water truck down at the shop. It's actually coming back tomorrow or the next day. They sandblasted the whole inside of the water truck and re epoxy coated it. You know, so we get another 10 years out of the water truck. But I mean, there's lots of little things happening like that that you know, uh, taken care of. Yeah. Well, lots of stuff going on. Very good. Well, I'll get with Brad on next week and spend some time to go down that. It's kind of what I get paid to do now. It's just hang around. Did <laughs> <laughs> retire? Yes, I did. Job. Yeah. I've got plenty of people trying to give them to me. <laughs> <laughs> they know. Adjourn is it? Five forty-nine.